Welcome back, Wolfpack. Verlus here to the start of this week's Fan Fridays. Now, ever since the Pokemon Company dropped the battle code with the first exclusive gameplay for Zeraora, I have been really curious to see how this one plays out. I love the theme behind it. I love what's going on. And you know what? Pokemon Company, they've got to be a fan of me, right? So let's go and kick it off with a very unique submission and we're going to see how this ends up playing out but yeah i love it you know i wasn't as on the ball doing the video behind this because i was just like oh it's Zeraora. oh hey alugia and eevee it's like oh it's a movie thing that ties in with a lot of the events and then we're going to see how Zeraora plays but that matchup against the guzzlord it's going to be interesting so we're going to watch it play out I except when the close combat comes through not gonna yeah that's safe that was enough to one shot i'm already scared of this thing not gonna be enough to one hit ko the guzzlord takes those hits and then earthquake oh the air balloon i mean i probably a scripted battle just show off the zero aura probably a very scripted battle but we're gonna see where this one goes oh wow though the close combat gonna get baited by that ghost type pokemon on the blacephalon and that's a switch out not gonna go for the plasma fist for that one shot and into the lugia all right, we got a little little bit of an interesting thing going on right here. Flame Charge Blacephalon. Is that the meta, guys? Are we learning new strats right now? That could get a little intense. And then that's going to be a Shadow Ball onto Lugia. Super effective hit. The multi-scale has been broken. The outspeed is happening, but that was probably already happening before the Flame Charge. And then an Arrow Blast from the Lugia. Big damage, not enough to KO. And that's going to be a switch from the Lugia, so just get a little bit of trade damage as now we go into the Eevee. Oh, the, I was about to say, oh, the Sacrificial Lamb, but nah, that's going to be a Shadow Ball. And then if Eevee can tank this one out, things might be okay. Flame Charge. Is, is that it? Where, where's the uh, Mind Blown, man? Oh, this game's over, guys. That's going to be a GG. I, never mind, the Flame Charge, though. But then Eevee's going to have the stats. This is, this is going to be an interesting battle, see how it plays out. So, Extreme Eva Boost is going to give us plus two. And the first thing I saw when I saw the uh, entire battle thing play out, like, I wonder what Eevee's item is, because not leading it, you know, doesn't really show Extreme Eva Boost as much. But it kind of has to have it, so I wonder if this is going to... Oh, okay, guys. Pokemon Company is dropping some mad hints right now. Evo Boost evolution for the movie promotion <gasps> whoa flying type eevee confirmed right now but gaining sh just tons of stats on on that eevee and then going into the zero aura sounds like one of the most terrifying things that could ever be done flame charge that's not gonna be enough to ko blacephalon really dropping the ball right now that you need to mind blown to take it out and that's gonna go into the zero aura and it's, it's just going to show the sweep. Hey, guys, you want this really cool event Pokemon? All you have to do is slap an air balloon on it, have your opponent whiff an earthquake, and then you, too, can win. Going for just the insane speed with this Blacephalon. Air balloon's going to pop off of that, but the Thunder Punch. All right. Learning a little bit about the moveset right there. Uh, Thunder Punch... Plasma Fists, I'm guessing, and then we also have the Close Combat. So is there Aura looking to have something? But no, Celesteela, it's going to be fine. And oh, oh, I see what they did there. They're trying to show that even with the Berry, this Plasma Fist is going to wreck the Celest... Wow, never mind. Okay, I I don't get to say anything. Oh, Jubbated. The Plasma Fist into the Explosion. Explosion Celesteela, also new meta. That Volt Absorb trolling. And that's going to be Celesteela giving itself up right there. Now that brings us to the Guzzlord. So Guzzlord already just took massive damage off of that close combat. Plasma Fist once again. You know what? Why not? Why not just show it off? Because it's cool. You know, Zeraor is a pretty awesome Pokemon. And that's going to be it. You know, it captures lightning and it charges up electricity and then it uses it to fly and stuff. So that's going to be the sweep right there. The 3-0 from Zeraora. Unstoppable with that Extreme Evo boost. But I am surprised. Like, I was expecting that a uh, raw Plasma Fist. So plus zero Plasma Fist would just one-shot a, a Celesteela like that. And then also having the plus two into the... Conf or not the Confusion Barrier, the... Uh, effective berry that would also be something interesting but now so like the survival ranges were also really interesting and there is one other thing i want to do so i did a battle yesterday just kind of like mock battling this stuff out 
But, but I think I want to do this. Oh, well, no, I think I want to do this. I want to do this again just to kind of see what the Zero Aura has. I, I'm pretty sure we already confirmed it is an event Lugia. I don't know if that's going to be a new event Eevee. Like, the Eevee there is just kind of more for the movie than what I believe to be an event Pokemon. But an Extreme Evo Boost Eevee would make sense. I don't th see anything special about Lisa's Eevee, though. That would kind of make it matter for an event like it's just an Eevee and you can get Eevee all over the place and you know, there's tons of fives and six IVs Eevees out there so having the event unless it gets a crazy exclusive move well then that's dangerous because then you evolve that Eevee instead and things are gonna happen so let's go into the ditto actually baiting yo yo ditto might be like the best counter to Zara or on that bait when you think about it Volbsorb into its own electricity that's gonna be pretty strong right there Ditto coming in with that imposter, and now we got a Zero Aura. Well, now we get Yay! I'm you first ever legitimate usage of Zero Aura, guys! We're doing it, boys. And what do we got? So we got Plasma Fist, Thunder Punch, Close Combat, and Thunder. Yeah, not the most like what I would expect to be competitive. I'm get I'm wondering if that's gonna be the event. And unfortunately, if you go with a summary, you, you don't get to see your changed stats on the ditto. So we don't really have a Zero Aura to play with, but that's something right there. And I also wanted to run some damage calculations to see how that battle would have gone, or like how Zero Aura works. So not necessarily at the um, guide part of making a Zero Aura video, but I just kind of I'm interested in this guy now because this is this is something I really didn't expect. I didn't expect the Pokemon Company to do this. This is like one of the coolest things ever. They need to promote movies. They need to promote events. They need to promote games because now we get to battle against it, and then we get to see how it plays. And if the battles were a bit more competitive, you know, I think I think they. It's, it's hard because Ultra Beast is a theme. I wonder, are Ultra Beasts going to be in the movie then? Is that actually going to be the invasion? Holy crap, guys. This actually... Man, now now I don't know what to do because I'm doing this on Fan Fridays. And now you guys know what I'm going to do for like Saturday or Sunday's video. Speculating about the movie plot. Because, yeah, why, why is the movie team going up against the Ultra Beast team? That's a little, that's a little, that's a little interesting right there. Because, yeah, I really wasn't expecting the Pokemon Company to do this, because, like, now what do I do? I was saving the guide for when the event actually becomes legal, because then it makes sense that the Pokemon actually exists at that point. But now, you know, the Pokemon Company is acknowledging it, and they're already making gameplay of it. So that's something I wasn't ready for. However, the, the stats behind Zero Aura are insane, but also not the craziest thing ever. However, it's synergy with itself. That Volbzor Plasma Fist, that's broken. Normal type Pokemon, completely shut down by this. 143 speed, that's insane. Definitely when I do the guide, going to have to get on those speed tiers for sure but 112 attack is okay and against Celesteela I guess I didn't know what to expect relax with not even max amount of defenses that's not even gonna be enough to KO so still still a 2-8 KO right there Celesteela rocks the earthquake so how strong is that return earthquake though so return earthquake so trading like a 2-8 KO however if you are going okay let's let's mix this one up what happens we got 252 252 on that you know just Bulk offensive. Actually, Earthquake's not gonna be enough to take it out. So Zero Aura has enough initial like it doesn't even have that much residual tankiness, but the 88 on the hit points is going to be better than the average Pokemon. I know like 70, 70, 75, 75. That 88 is actually making a pretty big difference. And then if it had 70 hit points, that actually puts it into a KO range. Uh Tapu Koko. I already know that Tapu Koko is like going to be walled by it, but I just want to see what the damage is against resist so wow that's um that's just raw right there so plasma fist two shot against tapu coco it's only a 100 base power move oh but it'll be boosted on its own electric terrain never mind i was like trying to think about that one because like all right we're getting a lot in here so that means choice band will actually have ko potential on 70 80 pokemon uh let's go and bring that out then so choice band onto weavile all out attacker there it is that's actually well overkill. So, yeah, 75, 75. We're going to find a range like that. All right. And then, say if we have that close combat. Close combat is it enough to take out a Soul Valley. Yes. So, Choice Band is looking to be a very, 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 very appealing option. The Air Balloon switching on ground maybe like if it's not if it's not a ground type pokemon if it's just a, a regular pokemon splashing in the earthquake you get that air balloon switch and then you just kind of wreck it it's pretty good but i mean plasma fist two shotting a lot of things close combat still in that two ish ko range actually not super effective hit um 
Yeah, so that's going to be a lot right there. And then Life Orb. Life Orb does seem to be a pretty good go-to if I can actually spell and find it. So Life Orb, one hit KO, super effective hit on the Sil Valley. Finding the Weavile once again, that's going to be a one hit KO neutral hit. So 100 base power, or yeah, 100 base power move, strong with Life Orb on the high attack against a Frail Pokemon works. Average-ish Pokemon, uh, what, what would it, I'm trying to think about like a more average Pokemon. Lopunny is, now nah, 6584. So yeah, 6584 actually is where you start to drip out of that. And then it's mostly just playing that Volt Absorb. So you have a Pokemon that absorbs electricity. So electric type Pokemon, get wrecked by this guy. I see a lot of combos and doubles. And then normal type Pokemon, you just don't get to do anything. It's, it's over just like that. Uh, the damage is pretty good, and that's kind of it. So the reason why I brought Lopunny is I thought, like, I'm just trying to think of something off my head, because the Mega Lopunny is actually... has the pretty high, like, the raised defenses and stuff. High Jump Kick will actually one-shot. So just kind of showing that return damage. Uh, Zero Aura is in that 70-75, or not 70, it's 88. So actually it'll survive. So, Zero Aura, it takes a hit. It two-shots a lot of things, but it's faster. Choice Band does one-shot... Quite a bit. So, I mean, I feel like Choice Band is going to be the way to go. Choice Band, 143 speed. That except, except that's adamant nature. That's best case scenario. Hmm. 385 speed is good, but it's not the best. Jolly Nature does still give you some... Actually, yeah, it still gives you some damage, you know. It still works out pretty well. What about Weavile against that? Alright. So, yeah, that's kind of the breakdown that I have for Zero Aura. It's pretty cool, pretty interesting. We'll have to do a lot more digging, uh, speed tiers, better defensive matchups, and just kind of break down its moveset. I haven't looked at its move pool yet. I just saw the Plasma Fist close combat off of that. Thunder Punch doesn't seem to be worth it, and I don't really see a drawback to using Plasma Fist ever. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.